Hi, my name is Dave, and some friends of mine asked me to do a video explaining the steps I do on inlay with using a scroll saw. Made me a little nervous because I'd never done one, but with the help of my grandson, Nigel, he is helping me film this and edit it. So here we go. Anyway, the first thing I start out with are two pieces of three eighths wood that I have chosen for my project. I normally do my inlay using three eighths wood, um, kind of standard for me. This is going to be a lid for a trinket box that I'm starting to build. Here's the sides of the trinket box. I've used maple walnut. My lid is going to be walnut and maple also. I like using walnut and maple together. You can see because of the good contrast. The first thing I do is attach these two pieces together. You can use either you can use either hot glue. Uh, I'm using a 28 gauge pinner. It just works easiest for me. So we'll put it together. I get I nail it in the corner so it doesn't affect my project. If you notice, I'm putting my walnut on top. And the reason for that is the Batman in the outer circle I am doing in walnut and the uh, uh, background I'm doing in maple. So my walnut I will drop into my maple. There are different methods we can use attaching the pattern to the wood. I prefer using clear shelf paper. I like using duck brand. It's just what I use. A lot of people also use blue tape. I want to make sure it's sanded good with 220, wiped off good so my shelf paper sticks to it well. I don't want it pulling up while I'm doing my project. Sometimes it does, which isn't the end of the world. The other thing I did, I sprayed spray adhesive to the back of my pattern. People use all different brands. This is the brand I prefer to use. So I go ahead and set it down, the pattern on my project. One of the most important steps before you start your inlay is finding the correct angle to set your saw at so the top piece of your wood drops into the bottom piece perfectly. I like mine to I like to be able to push mine in with my hands. Uh, sometimes it comes out a little loose, a little tight. A lot of that can be adjusted by setting the angle of the saw. Uh, and the time it takes is most important. I like to use an angle finder to help me find the right spot in my saw, uh, right degree in my saw to set it at. It isn't necessary. It can be done by trial and error. I'll set it on my saw. And from the experience I've had, using 3 8 material. This is a sample I made. I put 3 8 material, the same size that I'm using for my inlay. I put two pieces together, just like my top I'm doing, and so I can test my angle on it. So, from my experience, I'm using a number 3 Pegas uh, MG blade. That's what I normally use, and with the experience I've found, if I set my saw about two degrees, uh, it usually comes out pretty darn good. So that's where I'll start this at today, and see how it comes out. Uh, let me, there we go, that's two, 
1.9, that's pretty close. We'll try that. Once I tighten it up, it gets pretty close to two degrees. Uh, we'll go ahead and try a circle with that. Make sure anytime you're doing an inlay, you start with a new blade so you can make sure it's sharp. The degree of your angle a lot of times depends on the thickness of your wood, the blade you're using, and the material you're cutting. Uh, the hardness of the wood tends to change the angle along with uh, the size of blade. But I just like using a uh, Pegas MG3 blade. That's just what I get used to using. The other thing you need to make sure is the tension on your blade stays consistent and you don't push too hard because all of that is going to change the angle. Okay, now we'll see how that top piece drops into the bottom piece. As you can see, it slides in about perfect. I can push it in with my hands. It doesn't go through too far. Uh, that looks pretty darn good to me. I'd rather have it maybe a touch loose than a too, touch too tight because if you have to beat your piece in, with a hammer, you have a tendency to split things out. I am drilling my entry holes. I use a number 65 drill bit. My number three Pegasus saw blade will just barely go through my 65 hole. The other thing I try to do is put my entry hole in the dark piece of the wood like the tend to try to get it in the walnut because I can hold, hide my hole easier. Some people put their entry holes at an angle to match their saw blade. I don't do that. I've never had great luck doing that method so I just go straight down and then fill where I need. I have to make sure my holes go all the way through so I can get through with my saw blade. Alright, we're good to go to cut this. Okay, we're going to start doing this cutting of this inlay. I go ahead and feed my blade down through my entry hole it is very tight. The smaller the hole, the less I have to cover. You got to make sure you get your blade in there and your chucks tight and get your tension good uh, because you want your angle to stay uh, consistent all the way around. So make sure everything is tight. Now, I am dropping the top piece into the bottom piece. So you got to make sure you're going to in the right direction. The way I remember is when I drop the top piece into the bottom piece, I keep my top piece that I'm going to cutting to the right of my saw blade. You can't push hard. You just want to take your time and go slow. One thing you need to remember you don't want to back up and correct if you get off the line. You want to just go ahead and make the correction as you go and keep your cutting smooth.
I will stop now and then, check my tension, and make sure my blade clamps are holding good to maintain the tension on my blade. Okay, there we've cut all the way around. And what I do at this point, I go ahead and see how it fits in. Uh, because on my second cut, if need be, I could go ahead and change my angle if I need to get it better. But as you can see, I would say that is darn near perfect. It could have been maybe a little bit smaller, but a little sanding and that looks good. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do the second cut. I will go ahead and put a new blade on because I want to st always stay sharp. Okay, I'm going ahead and I put in a new blade and I'm putting it through my entry hole. And remember, it's going to be tight because that hole is pretty small. Make sure in this step that you go in the right direction around this circle or it's not going to work. Remember, the top piece I'm keeping to the right of my blade. The piece I'm saving is to the right of my blade. Again, I stopped and checked my tension. Now as you can see, the bottom piece will fit into the top piece perfectly. Now I will go ahead and take the pieces apart because there's no need to saw through the double layer now because all I'm saving is the top piece. So I have to pry this apart. Let's see here. Thank you. 
I will go, go ahead and pull these pins out so I'm not damaging the top of my saw. I'm fortunate to have two saws, so this Hagner, I can go ahead and leave it set up without an angle. So on the outside of the top piece, I can go ahead and cut it out without the angle that I have set up on my pegger saw. So that way, I can go ahead and uh, get ready for my next inlay without having to change the, the angle. If you only have one saw, you'll have to take this back to zero setting so it's flat. Okay, now we're ready for glue up. I've found I save the backs of my shelf paper after I peel it off <coughs> to use for glue ups because it's slick and it glue doesn't stick to it. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove my shelf paper and pattern. And I use an acid brush to put on my glue to spread it out. I want to be generous with my glue and cover it all the way around good. One thing I forgot to mention to you, uh, I did use soft maple on this. My supplier had some really white soft maple and it's very nice to show the contrast between the walnut and maple. I go ahead and spread the glue out. Now once this glue is spread out, it may add a little thickness, so I may have to tap this in. We'll just see here. Now it's pretty darn good gonna take a rag and wipe that excess off. I'm gonna tap it just a little bit. I want it as flat as I can on both sides. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the top ring on, outside ring on. Gotta get it in the right direction here. Looks like that's the way it goes. We'll double check it the other way and make sure. Now it went the first way. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and put glue around that. I'm just using a tight bond glue for this. You can use whatever glue you've got. Okay, we're going to put that in. It's going together great. Okay, we're going to let this dry for a little while and then we'll come back and just sand it up and finish it up. Okay, glue's dry and I'm ready to smooth it up with an orbital.
Okay, I'm done with my orbital. And as you can see, the entry holes aren't very visible. I've got a little bitty one here and a little bitty one there. And what I'm going to use is a product called Famil Wood to cover up what's there. And I like Famil Wood because I can buy it to match my wood. I can buy walnut, I can buy maple, I can buy cedar. For me, it's easier than mixing up glue and sawdust. So anyway, I'll put a dab of Fama wood on there just to cover the holes and then I'll let it dry. It does just take a few minutes to dry. Um, really, it's almost not even necessary on this to cover it uh, because it's not very visible at all. Now I'm going to finish up with my little vibrator sander using 220 grit paper. Okay, there you can see, an inlay isn't that hard, give it a try, watch more videos, there's more than one way to do them, hope this helps you, this will be a good start on my trinket box, that lid will go like so. Anyway, thanks for watching, uh, look to see you again, thanks, bye.